Welcome to the Wholesaling Inc. podcast, America's number one podcast for new real estate investors, where finding discounted property is the most proven path to financial freedom. I am your host, Brent Daniels, and if I can do this, so can you. So let's get started. Let's get started with the four E's. I'm gonna mention the four E's, okay? Number one is energy. Okay, number one is energy, number two is enthusiasm, number three is electricity, and number four is excitement. Guys, these four E's right here, energy, enthusiasm, electricity, and excitement. If you have this in your life, you are going to be unstoppable. Okay, you're going to absolutely just be you would be so incredibly in love with this business, in love with being an entrepreneur, and in love with being unique and not being the average person that works nine to five that only has $500 in their bank account. You're gonna be one of those successful people and you're gonna have those four E's just in your core. And I couldn't think of a better way to introduce my guest on the podcast today. This guy is incredible. He, over the last two years, he has absolutely been on a rocket ship of success when it comes to wholesaling real estate. He's going to give you so many unbelievable gold nuggets in this. You definitely need to get a pen and paper, or if you're driving, listen to this again. Make sure you take notes. Without further ado, I want to introduce from Dallas, Fort Worth, or from Fort Worth specifically, Mr. Justin Peters. Say hello, buddy. My man, Brent Daniels. I'm honored, glad, and humbled to be here with you today, brother. Really looking forward to this interview with you, my man. Well, and this is going to be a little bit different because typically what we do is we will break down a specific deal. We'll tear it apart. We'll look at the four pillars of that deal being the condition of the property, the timeline that the owner had to sell it, the motivation that they had to sell it, and the price. But I want to switch this up a little bit because I want to give people some really, really, really important um, uh, strategies and tactics that you have that has taken your business from just uh, a couple handfuls of deals in 2018 to absolutely exploding in 2019. So to start this thing off, why don't you take everybody back to when you started wholesaling? How did you find it? And what did you do day one when you made the decision, I can be a wholesaler, I can do this? Yeah, no, great question, man. So I started back in September of 2017. Uh, I remember, I remember like it was yesterday. It was one of the the scariest times of my life. I had worked with a, uh, a startup company that most people are probably fairly familiar with now, called Open Door. Uh, helped them establish their market here in the Dallas Fort Worth metroplex. Learned an absolute ton of, of knowledge, gold nuggets. Learned how to really structure a team, the leadership, the KPIs, all the stuff that I didn't really know anything about. Um, and at the end of the day, man, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs, no matter how good of an opportunity you're presented with the company, there's always going to be a voice in your head that's telling you, you know, it's time for you to take the leap. If they're doing this, you can do it. You may not be able to do it on the scale. They're doing it right away, but in due time, you can do it. And I, I listened to that voice and looking back on, it's been the greatest, uh, greatest choice I've ever made in my entire life, man. So went from open door. Uh, started a company called Jay-Z Home Buyers in September of 2017. And man, for six months of doing this stuff, didn't have a single deal coming in. You know, it was it was day in and day out, but I just had this firm belief. Like I'm learning from these guys. I I started hearing about you from from Tom Kroll, Cody Hoffine, listening to the podcast, watching the YouTube videos, immersing myself with this stuff and saying, you know, these guys, you know, they look like giants to me, but if they're doing it, I, I can do it. Yeah. And I have that belief from the get go. And I, you know, with anyone that is hearing this or is wondering if they should take that leap, you've got to have that belief for anything else. If, if we're doing it, I'm a normal guy. There's nothing special about me. I was a dumb kid in high school, bottom 5%, got denied every college, but work ethic, commitment, and making that decision to turn things around is is everything. And if I'm doing it, I promise you can too. Trust me. And that's that belief factor. That's that identity factor that that's inside us. That's that internal castle that says, you know what? I can do that. I am a winner. I can do this. You know, all these other roles and stuff that we play on the outside, that's different. But on the inside, that identity part, that's the, that's, the, and, I, and I think we're speaking to a lot of people listening to this, or if you want to watch this interview, go to Brent Daniels Real Estate on YouTube, so you can uh, put a face with a, a voice, but um, the, that, that, 
factor, we're, we're talking to a lot of people that they wouldn't be listening to this podcast unless they thought that they they could do something special. They could do this business. So, you know, it, it's just incredible that you took, I mean, you listened to the podcast, you were taking all of this information, all this instruction in, but then you took it to that next level that we always talk about and actually took action. And not only did you take action, you took action for six months without results. Yeah, it was it was painful, man, going through it. But like you said, you know, the first part of it, I had that belief doing it. And I modeled myself after people that were doing things that I knew were going to end up working. And so it wasn't, you know, it's not like I'm in a market or in a place to where all these people and you listen to enough podcasts and you start you start modeling yourself after success of people and hearing what they're saying. You start seeing trends and, and things that they're doing. And so you always want to see that, listen to that knowledge, and then start focusing on how you can implement that in your market as well. No matter what it is, wholesaling, any business idea, anything you're trying to accomplish, you find people that are doing it. You find people that are better than you at it. You model yourself after them. You be very, very, very patient with the process because it's never going to come easy. Everything worth having is an uphill battle. And in due time, if you have that perseverance and everything else that comes with it, success is going to be yours. But most people quit before it comes into fruition uh, just because they don't have that tenacity to hold on. And so, uh, you know, going back to what we were talking about, man, six months going into it, uh, didn't have a single deal, but we kept going. And I knew that this was something that was going to end up working. And then, Brandon, it was like the floodgates just opened. All these leads we were putting into our, our CRM. I was using a CRM at the time called High Rise, very basic. Probably didn't even know what I was doing most of the time with that, but they started just popping. People that we had talked to four or five months ago, stayed in contact with every 30 days, just reaching out to them, you know, just checking in. Hey, you know, I know the last time we talked, you weren't ready, but just wanted to let you know when you are. We want to be that individual that's going to be able to help you out with this next chapter. And then we had on that six month mark, like four or five deals just come in. And that's when I knew this is a proven concept. And it, just engaged that fire, fueled the fire, and the rest is history. Man. So some in incredible, first off, is some people might be listening to this and go, how did Justin survive financially for six months without making anything? Were you doing other things to make to, to produce income? Were you doing so stuff on the side? Did you have a full-time job? Like what were you doing or did you just have savings? How did you survive that six months? Yeah, that's a great question. So what I did is, you know, when I started here and kind of going back to that voice telling me to, to sink my ships and go after uh, the entrepreneur roller coaster ride myself, I, I made sure that I had a little nest egg. And so I was saving, I was being frugal, I was putting money aside. Uh, you know, you'll hear stories of people just going all in with no money in their bank account. It may work. I mean, I'm not going to say that it can't, but I wanted to make sure because of the process and knowing that something like this could take time. Uh, I had a little nest egg. I could at least afford my living, have a roof over my head, you know, afford the ramen noodles if I needed to eat those on a week-to-week -week basis and, uh, you know, lived off that. And so if money was tight. Don't get me wrong. I wasn't able to go out and do the things I was used to doing. Uh, but with anything, man, especially something as exciting as this and seeing the possibilities, the sacrifice is worth every second, every dime I didn't have to spend during that time. I love it. I remember the first year really trying to push this thing out, really trying to, I, I, I got myself into a financial hole and so I was totally broke for like a year. I ate uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for two meals every day. Like that was it. That was it. And then like at night would be like spaghetti type of thing. You know what I mean? It was just like, but I knew that I couldn't get a job. I knew that it wasn't in like, not that I couldn't get a job, but that I, I had no desire for that. I knew it would suck my soul out. And I think, you know, that there's, you get through that. And now I look on it in, in kind of fond memories, but, you know, when you're in it, it really feels terrible. And you, it really does attack your confidence to go out there. But I think what I did to replace that is, and it sounds like you did this as well, is I went and just had to take action all the time. I had to be moving all the time. I had to be talking to people all the time or my mind would just start hallucinating, coming up with crazy things and really just pull me down. So as long as I was in action, I was feeling good. Is that the same for you? It was, man. Uh, one of my favorite quotes is action creates reaction, right? So the way that we're thinking about things and we're doing stuff, when we sit there and we let our mind kind of take over, it's usually not going to be in our benefit. When we take action, what we're doing is we're automatically creating momentum. 
Um, and I truly believe Tony Robbins talks about this all the time. The secret to happiness is progress. Yep. And so you have a goal that you've laid out and you're slowly but surely you're working towards that goal. You're going to feel energetic. Things are going to be looking on the upside. Even if it's slow, minor ticks, the compound effect of just daily action, you know you're getting there. And that's the key to all of it. You don't want to sit back analysis paralysis and just study this stuff over and over and over and think about how you're going to take action be willing to fail be willing to go out there and say look i'm going to look silly i may look stupid doing this it's okay we all have i promise you anyone that you've seen be on a podcast anyone that you're trying to model after that's doing great things in this industry we have failed and we have failed and we have failed and that's why we end up succeeding with what we're trying to go after in life. And I think that's just a true testimony to anything you're going after. Be willing to look silly, be willing to fail because the only way to succeed is to fail in this life. And I'm, I'm a true believer of that and always will be. I love that. I, well, and analysis paralysis is a real thing. There's a, a quote uh, that, that I really like that says, uh, thinking and planning doesn't create action. Action creates thinking and planning. You know what I mean? Like, I love that. So, you know, it all starts with, and, and we're very heavy. If you've listened to any of these podcasts before, guys, or watched any of the, the videos on uh, my YouTube channel, then you know that the, the primary function of, of all of these videos is to give you the instruction that you have to take action. So let's break it down. Let's get to the nitty gritty with you, Justin, because behind you, you have an incredible vision. You have core values. You have all these things. So if you're watching this on the YouTube, you can obviously see this if you're just listening to this uh, I would definitely tell you to check it out um, on the YouTube channel but um, how did you well let's talk about this 2017 how many deals did you do I, zero yeah, zero deals 2018 how many deals 2018 we ended up with I believe 23 closed deals okay 23 and 18 and then 2019 2019 we ended up closing 97 properties this year my man oh hold on a second hold on a second let me hear this. Oh. <laughs> My favorite sound in the world right there, Mr. That Daniel. That is a huge jump. I mean, you tell me, I mean, I, just from a just from an entrepreneur perspective, from a business owner perspective, to go you you almost quadrupled your results in a year. What'd you do? What'd you do right? What'd you figure out? What's the secret and, sauce? Yeah, so you know, kind of going back to where we started, um, one of the main things for me is I wanted to go deep before I went wide. And so what do I mean by that? There's so many different things that work in this industry, right? We hear about PPC. We hear about direct mail. We hear about all these different things that, that investors are doing that are working. And what I realized is like, if I'm going to end up doing this, I need to be a disaster before I become a master. I need to learn all this stuff myself. I need to focus on it one at a time. Once I've got that focused on, mastered and then delegated, then I'm going to move on to the next one. Okay. Uh, looking back on it, it was one of the best decisions I made because I didn't have so many different things come my way where I was dabbling in multiple channels and I was able to really hammer down, nail down what I wanted to start that I knew was going to work and focused on that before I went to another one. Yep. Uh, and so what we did is we started, I mean, you see it on your shirt, you see it in the background. We started talking to people, my man. It was the number one key in our business. So how we started talking to people, we, we joined the TTP program, yeah. uh, learned from this wild, energetic dude named Brent Daniels, <laughs> how to go about talking to, to people, how to set it up, how to make sure that we're serving these homeowners in the absolute best manner possible, give them the best solution to their situation. And then we started to, to scale on that. And so with our leads that we were coming into Mojo, which is a huge part of it, is we wanted to make sure that we focus on a list that no one else in our market had. And so how do you get a list that no one else has? Well, what you have to do in the method that I know that works for sure is what's called driving for dollars. And so each day when I started out, man, I would time block. I'd say, okay, for, for at least three hours, I'm going to be driving for dollars. I'm going to go into areas that I know are uh, distressed areas where I think that homeowners, you know, there's some fixed houses around it, but there's also some distressed houses as well. And then I'm going to do at least three hours of mojo dialing. I did that every single day for, I mean, a year at a time before I was able to start hiring people on, delegating that aspect as well. And so once we got to that point, um, you know, it, it kind of reversed it back a little bit. We, we got to the point to where, you know, we had a system in place. We were doing it on our end. And then when I went, knew that I was ready to go to another marketing route, 
it was like, okay, now we've got to find someone that we can teach. They're not going to be, we don't want to look at it like they're going to be a hundred percent just like us. Right. Let's find someone that's going to be 80% as effective as us on these phones. That's going to be local. That's ready to make a transition that knows that there's going to be advancement opportunities, growth opportunities. Let's get them on and let's start building this team. Right. And so that's what we were able to do. We found some people that were close by. I was fortunate enough to have some friends that I knew were uh, energetic, that were hungry. Um, you know, the guy I met, he didn't go to college or anything. He, he was a, a gym fitness coach and he jumped on. Uh, we painted the picture for him saying, hey, you know, this is an opportunity. Here's the guys we're learning from. This could be something really special. Uh, here's the first steps of it. And so we put that in place and then we started slowly but surely adding on another one and another one and another one. And then from there, when you delegate that out and you create the right systems in place, you're able to focus on other things, knowing that that channel that works, that's bringing results, uh, is taken care of. So you're able to build that business and build that vision that you have in place for you and your business. Mm -hmm. Love so, it. so in the well, and let me just um, a little bit of side notes for anybody that doesn't know. Just to mention, Mojo Dialing. Mojo is a dialing uh, a platform. MojoSells.com. You can definitely do that. What are you using as an app for your driving for dollars? Yeah, so we use Deal Machine. Yep. Uh, yep. It's an amazing app. We've been able to get on. I use also a, a company called Upwork.com. Uh, so anyone that's looking for freelancers, at a certain point, you're going to have data entry. You're going to have a lot of different things that are very important and necessary for your business, but you're going to have to delegate because they're not going to be the best use of your time. Yeah. And frankly, you're going to find a lot of people that are much better than you at that stuff. Mm -hmm. If you're a high paid person, uh, visionary, and you're a go, 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 sitting down and handling data and doing that stuff in Excel, it's not what you're going to thrive at, right? So you yep. always going to be focusing on the stuff that you know is important that you have to in your operations and how you're going to be able to scale that out. And it's at a very affordable cost as well. Um, and so we use Dill Machine. We've got a VA. We set up training videos um, saying, hey, you know, when we have a list that comes in, here's how we're going to break it down. Here's the format needs to come in from there. Uh, we're putting it in. We're getting the phone numbers in, in the right manner, obviously doing it in the legal way on our end. And then uh, taking action, reaching out to these homeowners and seeing how we can serve them and give them, give them the service they need and deserve with life's biggest transaction. Love it. So out of the 98, right? 98 deals last year, about how, what is it? 97? Three away from 100. Man. 97. So for the 97 deals that you did, about how many of those, those came from that driving for dollar strategy? Yeah. So 48 of them came Ooh. from. Oh man. And we're going to go into that because I think it's really important. But if anybody's listening and you're, this is your first time or you're thinking about it, um, if you use the coupon code TTP at dealmachine.com, it's only $40 a month. I mean, it's a $40 app and you get the, you get all the info, all the owner information for these mm -hmm. distressed properties. So you're driving around, you click the app, it tracks where you're going. So you don't get the same properties and it makes it super easy. So you don't have to go and do a lot of, uh, due diligence on these properties to find the owner. And then from there, you can pull out in Excel, send it to batchskiptracing.com and get the phone number. So you're, it's kind of like a seamless kind of system. And that's exactly what Justin was doing. And, um, and so I assume now you've got a team of people. If you've done that many deals, you must have an army of people driving, out, driving around out there. Yeah, man. So we've got a team of, so 2018, uh, we had a team of, I believe, five people total. Uh, and then now this year, 2019, this year, we're still growing. We've got a team of 22 people. Um, a lot of those, like I said, we delegated 22, that task. Tw sorry, 22 people driving for dollars for you? No. So oh, okay. Five, and that's, that's consistent of our entire operations as of right now, not including VA support. Yep. Uh, for our drivers, and we're always looking for more. We've got six that are out in the field right now, four that are driving at least – 15 hours per week, um, you know, taking quality photos of these houses, knowing that we have a certain criteria that we're looking for, uh, and making sure that you know these houses that we're seeing, they're very clear on what's understood on our end. Our typical houses that we're buying, the distress model, uh, we're making sure that there's empty lots that are being tagged as well, and making sure all that data that's in there. And this kind of goes back with direct mail. So our VA, when they're taking that model, we have multiple different tags we've set up inside Dill Machine, right? So uh, the vacants, the distressed, um, what we call owner distress. So if we know that someone's living there and it's distressed, we want to make sure we add those as well, uh, the empty lots, et cetera. And so we're able to filter those tags. And this is why it's really important to tag properties 
when it comes to direct mail to ensure that we're able to hit them on that front as well uh, to the mailing address of these indiv individuals that Dill Machine provides to you as well. Love it. Love it. Now, let me ask you this. So if you've got somebody that's hungry out there that wants to get into wholesaling and they're willing to drive for you, are you willing to share this business, share what you know about this business to help them grow and learn? Absolutely, man. I am. Here's the thing. You, you got to be a go giver in this world. I learned that the first time I joined the tribe, man, the, the Rhino tribe, you've got to be willing to, to give it all away. And I, I live in a, a law of abundance, Brent, and I know that there's not a, a scarcity mindset. There's so many opportunities. So if anyone, if you've got a model, if you're looking to start driving, no matter what it is, I will show you to a T what I've done in my business, what I've evolved to up to this point. Um, how we utilize it on the VA front, how we uh, market to drivers to be able to find them, to give them the PDF, the infographics, all of that stuff. And yeah, hit me up and I'm more than happy to provide how do that. They, how do they uh, get a hold of you? Yeah, so the best way to get a hold of me, uh, you know, follow me either on Instagram, J U U S T I N Peters, uh, P E T E R S, or hit me up uh, on Facebook at Justin Peters. Uh, direct message me, whatever works best for you. We'll set up a time to chat, uh, email, and then we'll, we'll get the ball rolling. Say that Instagram one more time. Is it three U's? Yeah, three U's. J-U-U-U-S-T-I-N and then Peters, P-E-T-E-R-S. Yes, sir. There you go. Rock and roll. So you have 22 people now, okay? Now, what do all these people do in your business? And how do you keep them organized? How do you keep – how do you go – because it was just it was just you in the beginning. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Had yeah. a partner. Yeah. Yeah, we had a party. I had a party in the beginning. Great guy. Visions weren't matched. And, uh, you know, we both realized that we were kind of meant to do things, control things in our own manner. Um, and now it's just me and then a, a group of absolute rock stars. I'm, I'm blessed to be able to surround myself with. So in your office, what does it look like? Are, are 22 people there every day? Do they work from home? Are they running around? What's what? What do you need 22 people for? Right. Great question. So in-house. Uh, we've actually we've got seven people that are in house, and the rest are able to work virtually. Um, you going back to Upwork, I've been able to find some incredible, incredible talent on Upwork by being able to filter individuals out, uh, knowing that hey, if I'm going to have 500 applicants, how can I add in some questions in there? How can I add some little tasks they can do to make that 500 shrink down to maybe 100? Then from there, how can I have another minor task to see if they're willing to do that? shrinks that down to about 50. And I keep doing that until I've got about 10 to 20 really solid candidates that have gone through the motions that are obviously showing me they're accountable uh, to be able to use with our front line of texting. You know, we make sure we go about all the rules and regulations the correct manner that way. And then obviously uh, inbound calls. So I've got in our operations, seven people as well on our SMS front. And what they do is they're handling the text messages uh, they're handling inbound calls as well. So anytime that we have direct mail, anyone that's calling in, uh, we've trained them on how to be able to talk to these people in the right way, how to prospect them, and then how to hand them off through our CRM that we have. Uh, shout out to Don uh, at Beast Mode. That's what we use with our CRM as well. And uh, yeah, that's that's been the, the key of it. And more than anything, Brent, how I've been able to get to this point, you know, it used to all be about the, the dream for me. And what I realized, it's so much more about the team. And if you want A-plus players, you have to be an A-plus leader. Yep. And you have to work on yourself 24-7 and realize they don't work for you. You work for them. 100%. And something, yeah, I had it twisted at the beginning, man. thought that it was the other way around. And I learned very quickly uh, through my journey, through my experience, that it's all about the team. And the only way I've been able to do any of this stuff is because the ones I'm able to call my team members here at Jay-Z Home Buyers. Yeah, if you can't get them to consistently win, you know, win and win and win and win, that's on you. That's on the business owner. That's on. That's why I always, I always say I think that there's, there's, there's people that should be unbelievable rock stars in this business as a one-person company. You know what yep. I mean? They go out, they get the deals, they get it closed, they keep it. They have nothing to worry about except for the deals and and having more quality conversations with distressed property owners on a consistent basis. That's it. Now, if mm -hmm. you want to have, be an entrepreneur, if you want to be a business owner, if you want to do that, that's a whole different thing. There's a big difference between the owner of the Lakers and LeBron James. 
LeBron, <laughs> you know what I mean? There is. There, yeah. there, there truly is. So, you know, one's a highly paid employee. Uh, the other one is a business owner. So, yeah. you know, it just depends on what you want. And it comes with different stress. So you have to have that, you know, classic self-awareness to know what you want to do. Yeah. And you obviously wanted to lead and you're obviously doing it successful. So uh, leading these the, these teams, finding these people. Well, first, you know, let me, let me skip back to one second because I think that this is important. Um, you had talked about filtering through Upwork. And I think yeah. that this is a big challenge for people listening to this because a lot of people want to hire VAs, but they the issue is they go in, they don't know how to to find the right person. This person doesn't do a great job for them, and then they're like, okay, uh, that doesn't work. So how yeah. do you do it? How do you effectively find great VAs? Yeah. So before I begin on this, Brent, I do want to say this: if you've had a VA that's failed in the past you most likely were the one that failed as a, a coach and a trainer, right? And so I, I did it as well. I had VAs wondering why they were falling through so consistently. Uh, and then I realized, oh my gosh, it's because I didn't have the education, the information. I didn't make it so dummy proof in what they were supposed to do that you know I was just expecting them to be able to do it right. And so kind of going back to this right here, as far as our core values, our mission and all that, what really changed the game for me was a book called Traction. Um, it taught me the, the six main components of a business. And inside Traction, it talks about uh, processes, you know, SOP, standard operating procedures. And so I became fascinated with that and thinking to myself, you know, it, with any position that we have, how could I create it to where I've got uh, training videos, I've got an outline, I've got it to where someone who is a a 13 year old could come in here and know exactly how to do this job. Um, and so with Upwork, that's what I've done. I've made it to where if I know the job, first, first things first, you have to learn it yourself. You have to go through the pain and know, okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna create the most efficient uh, way possible to make this happen. And then I'm gonna create videos. And so what we use with our yeah. video, yep. QuickTime Player, there's also software called Loom. Um, you know, there's tons of different softwares you can use to create videos that create URLs, and then you document those in one centralized spot. So at first, we use PaperDoc. Uh, it's part of Dropbox, and we would just have, hey, here's our VA uh, data entry SOP, our playbook, right? Inside there, I would go through it. I would create the videos. I would then make an outline on it, and I would make sure that if someone was going to do it, I'd test it with someone on the team. Hey, go try this task for me. Look at this SOP. Tell me if you think... This is about as easy as it could possibly be when it comes to actually understanding how to do this. Love it. Uh, learning curve at first for sure, man. But now every time I hire someone, that's what I do. I go through the pain of learning it. I create a system. I make sure I have a video. I make sure I have a clear outline. I make sure I have a clear objective. Okay, for this job, here's the objective. Here's the expectations. And with that, there's no, there's no questions on it. And then if they ask a question that's not in there, they're just giving you feedback on how to improve your SOP. You take that question, then you add it in there, you add the education in there, and then boom, you're constantly building on this stuff and having it in one centralized spot. So then if that VA, let's say they find a better job or you know, things like that happen, sure. you're gonna have to recreate the will. You're literally just having to filter them out through Upwork, finding the right fit, and then boom, setting them in and having them complete that task for you. And one thing we've done well now that we have these SOPs is that we'll give them a test sample uh, with these VAs. So once they're in the last stage of us hiring them through Upwork, we'll say, hey, here's the task. Uh, here's the SOP on how to do this task. Get this back to us within 24 hours. And then boom, you've got someone because of your efforts that you put in one time uh, that is gonna prove to you that they can do this job over and yep. over for you. Yeah, exactly. I love it, I love it. You knocked it out of the park. You gotta put together these really, really, really like, perfect not perfect but really good videos that are yeah. going to train them and it's going to cut down the learning curve unbelievable because a lot of the let's be honest a lot of the roles that we have them do are repetitive jobs yeah. that we don't want to do it's a lot of uh you know kind of what somebody would 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 call grunt work type of thing you know what i mean um so incredible i love it so speak to uh, as we're wrapping this up Speak to somebody. Speak to somebody that's where you were two years ago. Mm -hmm. Somebody that's brand new, hasn't done a deal. Give them your best advice on how to get their first deal. Yeah, no, for sure. So 
But if I'm speaking to you too, I want to, I want to tell you this, that it's, here's the thing. It's going to be a journey first and foremost. It's going to take time. Anything worth having, it is an uphill battle. You've got to understand that you've got to realize you're going to have to have patience with this and that you just, like you said at the beginning, Brent, you've got to just take action every single day and things will start to happen for you. Please know that before anything else. Uh, and also know that you're worthy of it and you're capable of it. Have that belief system. No matter if you have to tell yourself that every day, affirmations, if you have to write it down on a piece of paper, do whatever the heck it takes to get that belief system because I'm certain you can hear this, you can see this, you, you have the ability to do it. You've been put here for a reason, you can make this happen. There's so many people in this industry that you're probably smarter than, more efficient than, and if we're doing it, you can too. That's the first thing I wanna get out with that. The second thing, as far as getting a deal, here's what I would recommend. If you can't afford deal machine, I would recommend getting a piece of paper a notepad on your phone and your notes, whatever it may be, you start driving neighborhoods. And when you see a bad house, you jot that house down, put the address in, boom, go to the next one, go to the next one, go to the next one. You build that list up as much as you can. Try to get a goal of, let's say 300, 500 distressed houses, something like that. From there, there's amazing companies that, that allow skip tracing, uh, you know, batch skip Tracer uh, based out of Phoenix. It's one of the best companies out there that provide absolute quality data. Start putting that into there. And if you look, if you're saying you don't have the money for that, you, you go, you do something, flip something out of garage sale. There's so many ways. There's no excuse when it comes to that. So yeah. I don't want to hear the, the excuse of money for that. You can take action and make that happen. Put that into a skip tracer. And then if you can't afford Mojo at first, and you've got a phone, or if you got to borrow a phone, you just dial them one by one. That's Maybe. it. Yep. And this will happen. And to be okay with no, have tough skin and know that it's going to be difficult. You're not going to talk to everyone that's going to be just ready to sell or happy to speak with you. And that's okay. It's part of the process and, and everyone's been there and been through it. You just got to keep trucking and having that belief. Things are going to happen. Things are going to pop up. I just keep in motion. Keep Love going. it. Love it. Guys, listen. Incredible. Justin, absolutely. I mean, I've just seen you take off like a rocket ship. I couldn't be happier. Just absolutely incredible. If you are in DFW and you're getting started, guys, reach out to him. You just got his Instagram. DM him. He loves it. He loves DMs. He's, he's one of these young guys, right? So uh, send him a DM, get in there, start working with him, work with his team. He's got a great office there and take it to the next level. If you're not in the market, guys, listen to what he, the instructions that he gave. It's very simple. Go out there. There's properties. Listen, there's 1.2 million that they average houses in America that are in distress this year. 1.2 million. Imagine how much your life would change if you had 100 of those. A hundred. It's not even a drop in the bucket. It isn't even a percent of a percent of a percent. There is. It is a conveyor belt. I am telling you, there's no competition. There's too many families out there that are not getting the, the their problem solved. You need to be that problem solver. Go out there today. If you're interested in joining the most proactive group in real estate investing, just like Justin here, go to wholesalinginc.com forward slash T. TP. That's wholesalinginc.com forward slash TTP. Scroll down, check it out, see what the program's about. If it feels good in your gut, sign up for a call. I look forward to working with you personally. Some of the tools that Justin mentioned, Deal Machine. If you dealmachine.com, use the coupon code TTP to make sure you get 10 bucks off a month and batch skiptracing.com for uh, the best data that you can get. So Justin, you're the man. Hey, really, man. really, hey, really, 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 really appreciate you coming on here. And um, for everybody listening or watching this, you guys absolutely, if Justin can do it, if I can do it, you absolutely can do that. That is, I, I mean, it, that cannot be understated. Trust me. Um, you can absolutely do this. You're the best. I encourage you always to go out there and talk to people. Love you. See ya. Take care.